you in the past, I'm in the future. You, you, you mad. Thank you all so much for clicking on this video. If you're new here, my name is Keila Trishan and I make videos on lifestyle, womanhood, and mental health. And if you are returning, thank you so much for your support. So, guess what day it is? You guessed it. Today is another story time. This story is about the time when I was harassed by a, a vendor, I guess you could say. I was working in car sales for the rental car company that I've told you guys about before. And let's just say that my manager didn't do anything and yeah. So this story time is funny, but it's serious at the same time. So if you're interested, go on ahead and stay tuned. Okay, so as always, let me give you a little bit of background so you can kind of understand how the position worked and how I got to the situation at hand. So as an account manager for the car sales location, part of, well, not part of, but my job is to sell cars. The way we would get the leads is we would typically market to either just like the public, uh, people that were walking by, we would get walk-ins or just people just walking up to see what we had available. But a lot of it, we had to go out and get the business. So we were typically assigned a series of credit unions, rental car locations for people that had a total loss and needed to replace their car um, and things of the sort. So one of the locations that I had was this credit union that wasn't far from the branch that I worked at. And it usually starts with your manager taking you into that location and introducing you to the staff. And then you basically come in every week to build a relationship. You, you know, may bring goodies and stuff like that. Some places were a little more welcoming. Other places didn't really want to see you, <laughs> but it, it was our job to kind of cultivate that relationship. Okay, so basically my manager took me inside of this location and everybody seemed really nice. So I got introduced to all the tellers, I got introduced to the branch manager, the assistant manager, and all of the bankers. And I set the expectation that I would be there every week, gave everybody my business cards, told them how to get in touch with me. And another part of that was to provide them with your cell phone number. This is your personal cell because we didn't get work sales. But you provided them with your cell phone number just in case they had like a hot lead or something and they needed to get in touch with you right away to see if you could facilitate the sale. So there was a gentleman that worked there and he was a banker and he was really nice. Now I didn't think anything of him being nice. I just thought that he was you know, <laughs> I, I just thought he was a nice guy. And, you know, he was just trying to help me out as far as getting my car sales goals every month. So whenever I would come into the branch, he would always pull me aside, we would chat it up for a little bit, and that would kind of be that. So as time went on, he started to kind of prolong the conversations. And he would ask like more personal questions, like where are you from? How did you get into this position? Where do you live? Things like that. I didn't really think much of it again in the beginning because it just seemed like we were just building a rapport. So I would, you know, engage, not obviously giving too much information, but I would just tell him like, oh, you know, I'm from here, started doing this position because of this, whatever. So one day when I come in there, one of the employees who was male, um, he did the same position as this guy, but he kind of peeped that the interaction seemed a little, um, seemed a little too much. So he just asked me if I was okay. And even then I wasn't thinking anything of it. And I was just like, oh yeah, like, like why wouldn't I be okay? And he just kind of just said straight up, well, you know, it seems like such and such was just kind of, you know, close, just want to make sure everything is good. And I'm like, oh no, like I'm fine. You know, thank you for checking, but I'm good. So the next few interactions just started to get kind of weird. He started to like text me, but it wasn't about car sales leads. It was more like, oh, are you going to be in the area? You know, wanting to see if you wanted to grab lunch. Are you going to be out here on the day off? Want to see if you want to catch a movie? Things like that. So I do make it a habit not to deal with people in that capacity <laughs> that I'm working with, especially as a vendor, because I mean, it, you know, it could get kind of weird. So, and then on top of that, this guy was like way, way older. So it just didn't make sense. 
So I was nice about it. Like I wasn't really, I wasn't mean at all. Like I was more like, oh no, I'm not gonna be in the area or just come up with an excuse as opposed to just shutting it down. And when I look back, I probably should have just kind of like put the nail in the coffin. Like, look, not interested in that, only interested in business, whatever. So he seemed to be a little more like aggressive when I would come to the branch and aggressive in a sense where like if I'm getting ready to leave, it's like, oh no, wait, like wait till I'm done with this customer, you know, I need to talk to you. And then he's asking me again, personal questions. So it was getting to a point where like I stopped coming as much to the location because he was just making me uncomfortable. And I didn't say anything to my manager right away because I don't know. I didn't say anything to my manager right away because I thought maybe I was tripping. Like maybe I was just kind of making it more than what it should have been, whatever. So she had asked me why the sales had dipped. And I basically used it as an opportunity to tell her what was going on. And I said, hey, um, you know, I stopped going as much because these things had transpired. He seemed like he was flirting, he was making me uncomfortable, and I just really didn't know how to address it. So she seemed concerned at first, and she's like, oh, okay, well, do you want me to come with you? You know, maybe talk to the manager about what he's doing. And I told her right then and there, I was like, well, maybe not right now. Let me try again since it's been, you know, like three weeks or so since I've been there. Let me try to go in there on my own and just kind of see what the atmosphere is like. And if I need you, then I'll let you know. She said, okay. So um, like maybe the next day I ended up going back to the branch and the guy wasn't there. So I don't know if he was on vacation or what, but he wasn't there at the time I was, which was a breath of fresh air. Who was there though was the employee that initially asked me if I was okay. So and I went to his desk, he asked me straight up, he was like, well, I haven't seen you, you know, in a few weeks, is everything okay? What's going on? And I told him, I was like, well, you know, between me and you, remember when you asked me if everything was okay with such and such and he's like yeah I said okay well it's not and you know he's been texting me and just kind of you know seeming like he's flirting and I have not been feeling the greatest about coming here as often as I was so from the way he looked it seemed like this probably wasn't the first time that employee had had issues dealing with like vendors or I don't know if it was like something happening with their employees I don't know but it kind of seemed like he was a repeat vendor so he told me he was like look I don't want your money to be affected by such and such and so I'm gonna make a comment to him and we're gonna make sure this doesn't happen anymore and I thanked him I was like okay you know I really appreciate that so I leave go back to the branch and I told my manager that I think everything should be fine told her what happened she said okay so I ended up getting a call maybe a day or two after that from the employee in question. Uh, he calls the branch and he asked to speak to me. And when I get on the phone, he's like, Did I offend you? Did I do something? And I was kind of stuck because I'm, I just wasn't expecting him to like straight up call me. So I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, oh, well, I talked to such and such. And they said that you didn't feel comfortable because of something I said or did. I would have appreciated it if you had told me directly. So me being a little bit younger and just not really knowing how to handle stuff like that, I just kind of made it seem like it wasn't that big of a deal and told him like, I, I basically minimized what he did. And I told him that, yes, I wasn't really comfortable with the messages. And yeah, I probably should have said something to you, but I apologize. I'm apologizing for something that he did. Yeah. So anyway, that was pretty much that. Like I, he just seemed like a little annoyed and then he's just like, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be cognizant of that the next time you come in. So I came in another time and he was there and he was acting kind of standoffish, like almost like he had an attitude, but I would have rather that than him being weird. So I thought that that was pretty much the end of it. I thought that was the end of that situation. I didn't think I had to worry about it anymore. Fast forward, maybe a week goes by and we're at my car sales location and we see somebody walking through the parking lot. The way we sat, it was um, one of my coworkers, there was somebody in front of them and then I was the third person in line. Do you know who it was? It was the employee coming in to see me. So he came in and everybody was kind of shocked and didn't know what was going on because everybody at this point knew the situation. 
So I was a little scared too, like, why are you at my branch? Like, the vendors never came to the location. It was us that would go to their location. So it was just completely odd and out of pocket that he was there. So he asked to speak to me, but my assistant manager at the time, who was a guy, stopped him and told him that, you know, hey, you can't be here this time, we're closed. You know, whatever you need to speak to her about, you can speak to her about it during business hours. Cause he wasn't coming in to buy a car or anything. He was coming in to talk to me probably about, you know, the situation. So at that point, I felt like I needed my manager to come with me to the branch to talk to his manager because that was kind of like, that was just a little scary. Like, why are you at my job? Like, what are you doing? And just the energy that he came on, I don't know if he came to like physically do anything, but it was just weird that you felt like it was okay to pop up at my job. So she kind of dragged her feet and just like didn't really didn't really seem like she had time to come with me at this point when she offered it in the beginning so I was a little floored but whatever so I tried to time it to where I would only go to that location when said employee was on lunch or when he was off so I was keeping in touch with the employee that had my back initially and the next time I decided to go the gentleman was on lunch so I went to the location and everything was fine. I talked to all the employees that I needed to talk to. And when I was leaving, that employee was, I had seen him down the street, like he was pulling back into uh, the branch. So I was trying to hurry up and get to my car before he uh, saw me, but he spotted me out right away. So next thing I know, he's standing right by like my driver's side door, like leaning on the car. And I'm looking like, okay, <laughs> I may be young, but I'm not about to play with you. Like if it comes down to it, I'm just gonna have to fight you in this parking lot, but you're not, you're not about to do all that. So I asked him to step away from my car and he didn't, he blocked me. So it was only when I basically told him that I was going to say something to his management because like, I'm not with being harassed, that he stepped out of the way. And, but it was kind of like aggressive, kind of looking at me like, all right, like I got you. So I didn't know if he was planning something or what, but I basically got in my car and I got the hell out of there. So I get back to my branch and I tell my manager what happened. And she just kind of, she kind of brushed it off. Like, oh, he cornered you. He cornered you and I'm like yeah he cornered me like am I speaking a different language he cornered me so uh, she told me that again told me that she was gonna call me up to the location and talk to his manager it never happened so I was at a point where I'm like I'm not gonna put myself in danger for this job so I'm just not gonna go up there anymore like y'all can either give me another credit union or you know I can be a company with somebody when I go up there but I'm not about to do this it's just not that serious so like a few weeks down the line she made a comment about how my sales had dropped from that location again. And I told her, like, we've had this conversation. I'm not about to go over with you again. I told you what happened with, you know, said employee. He was harassing me, and the last situation was the last straw. She, in so many words, told me that I was pretty much too scary to get my money, and I should have figured out a way to get around that because it was causing not only my sales to drop, but it was causing the branch's sales to drop. Needless to say, I was out of there probably a few months after that because I'm big on managers having my back. And if you can't even have my back with an employee or, you know, like a vendor harassing me, then I know you're not going to have my back on anything else and I can't trust you. And I'm not about to be working 12 and 13 hours around somebody that's okay with me being, you know, harassed. So, yeah. Basically, I never really had much issues out of that guy again after that last encounter. And I think it was because he felt like I was going to say something about him, which I was. But it also just kind of taught me that some of these managers, especially in sales, they only care about the sales. So I felt like she was trying to pimp me out and I was not for that. So, yeah, your girl got another job. So that is the end of the story time that I have for this week. Again, like I said, it, was, it wasn't even that funny, really. It was more crazy and it was sad that I was put in that situation, but it just kind of, like now, looking back, I feel like I should have probably spoken up way sooner and I should have taken it to the top way sooner. Just 
you know, for anybody that has gone through that, I hope you never do. But if you have, just know that you have rights. And if you do not speak up, then it kind of sends the message that the treatment is okay. So that's all I have for today. If you guys enjoyed this video, please go on ahead and give me a like. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you've made it this far and you have not subscribed, go on ahead and click on that subscribe button below and be sure to turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. With that being said, you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Bye.